Welcome to Rutland Rec Football. You're looking at the Rutland Rec Pride Red Team as we'd be taking on Bristol today. And these two teams have played just a week ago up in Bristol. And it was a 14-6 Rutland Rec win. And they'll be on defense first. There's no kickoffs, no punting other than that. It's all straight football rules. Eight-minute quarters. And Bristol in those maroon or burgundy color uniforms are just getting the chains all set right now. And you give me enough time and I'll get the rosters out to you. It is drizzling outside right now. It's windy and overcast day. I guess it's football weather. Fall in Vermont. And... And this is a program headed up by Jim Shortle, Mike Mullen, Andy Hawk, all the guys. And seventh, eighth grade level, they're introduced to tackle football. And it's really grown into quite a uh, well-ran, well-coached program. It's got a lot of alumni that are on high school teams. And I think they've actually played enough to go on college teams now. So very valuable tool for the local high school coaches. You get a freshman coming to your school, and he's had two years of tackle experience. So... As Keith is the quarterback, Tyrus Keith. You know, actually, that is not. I'll have to re revamp my roster. As Bristol on the attack here, quarterback-wise, will hand the ball off, go up the gut, and pick up a tough three yards of running. Now I can tell you who the quarterback is because it's Aaron Benway. So Benway at quarterback. So he ran the ball up the gut. And you can take me a couple of series, a couple of plays to get the uh, rosters down. But they did move the ball well. Chain gang says four yards. They picked up first uh, on first down. They picked up four yards. That's always good. So yeah, at the tailback position, big big young man back there. I think he's wearing number seventy. I'll have to wait and see when he turns. And we're going to flag and we're going to movement and we'll have our first penalty as a hard count. Drew Rutland wreck offsides. And it's going to be encroachment on the defense, and I'll move the ball forward. You can see him right there marching off, and it'll make it a second and, well, less than two yards right now. That's where they're going to mark it. Yeah, number 70 in the backfield. Big, big guy, James O'Brien. So Benway under center. You can see the defensive alignment out there for the Rutland Rec red team. They have a gold team also. And they are, they're going to give it off to the big man on the far side. He'll cut back, and boy, if he leans forward, I think he's got the first down as we look across the field. Yeah, so O'Brien looks like the spot. We'll give him the first down. You see the referee with the indication. As Kiernan Lackway coming out of the game defensively, number four for the Rutland Rec squad. And I can see some of the numbers out there defensively already. Number, number 95, Charlie Franzoni. Wearing 95, number 90 is Chase Wright, 72 out there. Oh, I don't have, yeah, I do. Tim Hogan, oh, Hogan Camp, Tommy Hogan Camp, yep. Again, I'll keep covering as many of those subs as I can as they have a first down, the initial first down of the ball game, and they're gonna pitch it to this side, and O'Brien with some space, got the corner, cuts the corner, and he's gonna go all the way down to the end zone, touchdown, Bristol. He's still curl, and I think the tackle was made too late. I'm waiting for the indication from the official. Touchdown. There it is. It's official. That's a long run right there. But I tell you, they sealed the block on this end, and he read his block. You know what was very good about O'Brien, number 70? He was patient on that sweep, and he let the blockers get set up, and he took it all the way in for our first quarter touchdown, making it 6 to nothing. Bristol, now they'll get set up for that two-point conversion. Well, it was a close ball game up in Bristol last week. Like I said, 14 to 6 was the final up there, and this is already 6 nothing Bristol. Can you watching tomorrow's high school stars today on Munger Vision? And I saw an ad in like the Rutland Tribune or Sam's Good News that Pike TV puts out, and it said you can see the next Derek Jeter, which is true. You can watch any, whether it's middle school, grade school. The seventh, eighth grade high school, you can you know you can see the Knicks future stars athletically on Peg TV, but they should have put you know a little credit there to Munger Vision. I'm the guy who brings you all the uh, they do have professionals now on Channel 20 doing sports, which I have a I never thought there should be professional gigs on public access, but but yeah, you can see tomorrow's high school stars today on Munger Vision. So they're gonna go for the two point conversion. Benway under center, you know Brian in the backfield. They've got a huge backfield back there. Lafayette, also number 64, he's the up back. He gets the ball, and he is going to keep those legs cranking, and I think he didn't make it. I'm waiting, looking, looking, looking. No. He was held from the two-point conversion by a good defensive stand by the Rutland Rex squad, so the pride will hold him to a 6-0 lead right now. 
So as I catch up on my paperwork, I'll mark down a score. I can tell you six nothing and eight minute quarters. I don't have time. So a big run by O'Brien as we will go now offensively to the Rutland Rec Pride Squad. See, this is an instructional read for the league, so the coach is right on the uh, field with the players. That's Jim Shortle, of course, MSJ graduate, and uh, was quite a football player in his own right. As we see them break the huddle, number seven, Nick Bowles, will be under center. So Bowles, number seven, under center, and we'll get the running backs squared away here in just a second. First offensive play for Rutland, and it was initially stopped at the line, and a good job of Wiggling his way forward was number 14, Brian Collimore. So Brian Collimore will pick up a couple tough yards. Good hard nose running right there. And defensively, a uh, nice job by Bristol on the line of scrimmage. Really had that pretty much a stalemate at the line. So we'll make it a second and eight. Again, it is sprinkly now. The field's not in terrible condition. Full house backfield, three backs back there right now for the Rutland Rec Pride. They're going to run a little pitch play and coming right at you with it. Looking for the corner, taking the corner and coming right by you. And he'll have a first down. Was well, Lenoci, Quinton Lenoci. Now I asked Quinton, if getting the rosters, a great run first down. If Marty Lenoci, 78 graduate of Rutland High School, was his dad, and he told me it was his grandfather. Well, Marty Lenoci, 78 graduate of Rutland High School, on the freshman football team that year, back when they still were called the Falcons. We played at uh, Flates Field behind the middle school now. He was the captain on the football team, him and Steve Swain. Right there, he had a great run. Oh, they ball fake, they're gonna roll out, Bowles to pass, and great catch on the corner, and he's got a lot of daylight to run with. He's gonna be brought down shy of the end zone, but he's gonna be in the red zone, and that's gonna be Nick Ionetta. And if I mispronounce any names, I, I really apologize. I did get here a half hour early, and graciously they let me get all the names and numbers from the players, but a lot of times I have problem hearing. But seriously, with the, uh, I can hear a lot of stuff well, but voices I have problem picking up, like TV, voices on TV when you're watching the program, but I think he said his name was Ionetta. That was an excellent catch and throw. So Bowles and the Pride on the run here as they're moving down the field, trying to tie the game up. 6 nothing Bristol in the first quarter of play. Get him, there's a pitch play, and see how he took it outside. Designed to cut up inside, but O'Brien there on the tackle, and they did pick up positive yardage. That was Colomore again on the run. Franzoni, 95. We see him coming into the huddles. They'll shuffle players in and out throughout the contest. I'm just trying to see 53 coming off the field. Let me find him for you. Now, how did I miss 53? All right, I'll have to work on that, get his number. Oh, Maneri, that's Devin Maneri. Well, I also have a problem reading my own handwriting besides listening to people. <laughs> They're gonna roll him out now. Under pressure, the throw right on the money and streaking toward, oh, great block downfield. He's gonna be brought down shy of the end zone. So Nick Ionetta with the, and I'll check on that pronunciation, with the catch and run. Bowles with the reception. Nick Bowles, the quarterback out there. I see 81 out there. That's Seth Drop. Franzoni coming off the field. Now I'm just trying to pick up numbers and identify him. So you bear with me. 72 is Hoking Camp. He's the center, it looks like. So good drive by both teams on our opening possessions. And look at that sidestep, Lenoci going in. O'Brien got him, Lenoci keeping the legs going. And I'm looking for an official. He's got to be real close to the end zone right now. So he must have kept him out. So we're looking at a, a goal, situa goal line situation. It's going to be second and goal. And yeah, now I can see less than a yard. I'm looking for the yard markers, and they're less than a yard away. As we watch right from the back side here, behind the quarterback, you can see the defensive alignment he's looking at. And he'll walk in for the touchdown. It'll be 6-6 now as both teams score on our opening possessions. And there's the official telling you it's good. Again, that was Ionetta. And I'm going to check on that, really. I, I should have done my homework better than that. So in a 6-6 game, See what they come up with for a two-point conversion. And they mixed the pass and the run very well there. 
Remember, he had a couple of completions to Ionetta. So Bowles. He's going to roll. Left-hander fires, and I think he did drop it. Yeah, hit the turf as he was looking for Seth drop, and he was unable to come up with it. So we'll stay 6-6. Six, six. As the defense is going to follow Mike Mullen out and get set to go. So we got a Donnybrook starting off here. As we've got competitive teams, teams well coached, a lot of talent on the field. I can see number two out there for Rutland defensively, Jake Alicia. So he's going to be at one. He's in the secondary. Drop is also in the secondary. As we have a new uh, looking formation there. They threw the ball down the field. Looking for that 15 yard gain. Benway, actually just a tad bit behind the receiver, but a well thrown ball, tight spiral, a lot of juice on it. Bowles, seven out there. Larry Metro Lucia, number two, is out there. Drop is 81 25, is Ionetta. 72 for Rutland defensively is Hogan Camp. 23 is Lenoci. Uh, looks like 95 Franzoni's out there. Number 90 is Chase Wright. He's out there. And I just can't see the other big guy on that defensive end, but I'll work on it. Again, slight drizzle, but it should be a problem as far as handling the ball right now. They're looking for the sweep with O'Brien. He scored on his play earlier. Oh, you see the block. Fumble. Ball's free stays in bounds. And battle for the ball. And I'm looking for see Red's got it. It's going to be Rutland Wreck Pride with the football. And that's drop coming up with a number 81. He'll have the fumble recovery. So quickly, they'll turn the ball over here, this possession. And it will become Rutland Wreck Pride football. Okay. You can watch Channel 15 every Saturday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Tom Leipold, the program director, starts playing the play of the games, a week play of the games of the week is what he plays, starting at 4 o'clock. So you'll be able to see this game then. You can also go to www.pegtv.com, click video on demand, and you will be able to uh, watch it on the Internet. You see you've got Collimore at the wing back position. They'll give it to Lenoci, and he'll burst up the middle, break tackles, and drag him forward. And he's going to be close. I think he's going to have a first down, and that was just good hard running. But that line out there, he will blast off from the line of scrimmage and control the defensive line and make a good hole for Lenoci as he did a good job of running hard. We're winding it down here in the first quarter. 6-6 six, six the score. Each team scoring on their first Offensive possession, and then we also had a turnover. The first turn of the ball game was a fumble by Bristol. And I believe that's the quarter. Yeah, so we've come to the one-quarter play. Rutland on the move, and we're tied at six with Bristol and Rutland wreck. Quarters, I'll read the uh, quickly the roster for the Rutland wreck squad, the red team. Brandon Van Gilder wears number one. Jake Lurcia is number two. John McCarroll is number three. Kiernan Lackney wears four. Five is Travis Fish. Nick Bowles is seven. Matt Seneca wears 13. Brian Collimore is 14. Colin Clark, 16. Number 20 is Shane Alvarez. 21 is Andrew Dayton. And I got to move a second because they're all moving. Go boys! Quinton Lenoci is 23. As we'll get in the spot here and lock them down. I left off at 24, Ian Riley, Nick Ionetta is 25, Steven Anderson wears 26, 27, Bailey Plant, Devin Maneri is 53, Josh White 54. As they'll settle on a spot for the ball. Uh, Dalton Woodard wears 96, Charles Fran Charlie Franzoni is 95, Peter Gibb 85, 57, Jacob Tanner. 59, Jacob Nichols, 64, Jason McFarland, 72, Tom Hogenkamp, 81 is Seth Drop, 90, Chase Wright, and Ethan Smith is number 91. If I have mispronounced any names, I truly do apologize. And I don't think I forgot anybody. As Coach Shortle gave me free reigns to go through and get everybody's name and number, and they're going to pitch the ball back, looking for the corner. Colomore will break a tackle, make the move to the outside, sprint to the end zone, and... Just stop shy as he's taken down out of bounds by O'Brien. Calmore with a good read on that block, let it set up and then accelerate with that great athletic ability of his as he burst like a NASCAR driver putting a throttle down as he got it to the outside and came up just shy of a touchdown. So in a 
first and goal. And it's time, that's the first play of the second quarter also. So Bowles coming out, and again, he'll take a look around, and Hogan Camp, I believe, is the center. I'm waiting for Tom to stand up. And they're going to get, I like the way they move the quarterback around. He's a lefty, lobbing it for that deep corner route, and I think drop one up and got a touchdown on a great catch and pass. Or pass and catch. As I'm looking for a number. I called it drop, but I think it was number 81 out there. Yes, he's coming in with the ball. So Seth dropped to the opposite of what his name did. He made up there, made a great catch, and it goes 12 to 6 now. Rutland Rec pride with the uh, with the lead, their first lead of this ball game. Now he threw that ball. Bowles did against a very stiff wind. Did a nice job of giving his receiver a chance to go up and get it. Devin Maneri, 53, is one of the guys that I missed on the line before, along with number 96, Dalton Woodard. Remember his name in the line, offensive lineman out there? And, boy, I don't know. Waiting for the officials? No. So each team has failed to convert a two-point conversion so far in the ballgame. Mike Mullen will lead his squad out defensively now. And let me find my pen here. I have to keep it in my pocket in the rain. And I'll tell you, it's 12-6 to 6 now. Rutland with the lead. Again, they mixed in with some passing with some running, a very balanced attack. As Bristol will come out. I saw a number 20 defensively. Oh, Shane Alvarez. Okay, so I'm trying to catch numbers. Alvarez is out there defensively for Rutland Rack. 16, Colin Clark is out there defensively. Matt Seneca is leaving the field. I think I have too many people in the huddle right now. Uh, Lenochi, Ionetta, 54, Jerry. Josh White is out there. Franzoni. As I'm trying, I think Charles Wright's out there, but see if Benway's still at quarterback. So Benway, the quarterback, he's got a huge backfield. And this is O'Brien. O'Brien picking a hole and dragging tacklers forward for good yardage. He's going to have about five yards when he gets settled down there as he brought the line forward. Yeah, number 88 is Ian. Well, I should ask how to pronounce that. This is a Bristol roster. Bashan, Bashan, B A C H A N D, Bakken. I'll go with that. I'll have to check on that. It's awful. I didn't know that. Travis Bashan is number 66. 14 is Aaron Benway. Taylor Keller is number 99. Again, this this is a very good-looking Bristol team. They scored on their first possession on a long touchdown run by O'Brien. Yeah, yeah. That is the second time to it today that Benway's gone to the hard count and has drawn the defense outside, so they'll pick up, well, they might actually pick up a first down on this penalty because there's gonna be five yards. See the official mark it off, and it'll be a first down, so that gave them first down on that penalty. <laughs> Peg TV, Channel 15. I say it, they feature Munger Vision. They don't put it down in their ads in the paper where they promote all the local sports, but in November it'll mark 15 years. And boy, that's a good run. And again, when he's done lunging forward, three and a half, four yards, and Bowles coming in along with Collimore now, defensively for Rutland. Number 14 is Collimore, number seven is Bowles. And they're gonna give a breather to number 16 for Rutland, Colin Clark, along with Kiernan Lackney, number four. I also see number 64 out there, Jason McFarland, defensively for Rutland as a break huddle. And I mentioned 54 already, Josh White's out there. As I look down the line, Franzoni is 95. Yeah, Charlie is. Right off the line of scrimmage, just straight quarterback keeper. He's just going to roll to the outside, turns the corner. He's got the first down and stuck hard on that far side, driven out of bounds. Now, I might have been early on my call. I think he's got a first down there, right, right near the chains, and everybody to drop the chains and run. Of course, that's the smart play to do for your safety. Could be a second very, very short. And that is what it's going to be. You can see the background of the official, the marker, and then the uh, chains. It is second down and very short. So I do see number 90 definitely on the line, defensive line out there. It is Chase Wright, 72 out there definitely on the line is Hogan Camp. Bayonetta is in the secondary. Drop is in the secondary. 
Give me another. Laricia is in the secondary. Number tw oh no, number 20 is not Alicia. It's Alvarez. Alvarez, number 20 is in the secondary. Benway with O'Brien. Benway, the quarterback. O'Brien is the tailback. Well, they got pressure on him this time as he's going to be brought down from behind, and he's going to be brought down for a loss by Franzoni, number 95, getting there. Boy, not only did he get penetration with a push behind the line, but then he had speed to chase him down. So that was excellent. Well, they jumped from second to fourth down on the yard marker, so... They, I must have been, they must have been just a little bit slow moving that. That must have been the third down play we just saw. So in the second quarter in a 12-6 game, Rutland with the lead. Bristol's going to go for it on fourth and three. It's Aaron Benway, an eighth grader at the quarterback spot. He's got O'Brien, number 70, in the backfield with him at the tailback spot. And 64. I've lost his number again. Well, I'll watch the play. That's who they're going to go with, and he's going to bun forward and got it. Oh, that great second and third effort as Lenochi in on the tackle. But he will move the chains, and I believe, yeah, Hogan Camp getting up also. He's helped up, up by Josh Garrow, number nine for Bristol. So Bristol able to pick up a first down. That was a fourth down play. Philip Canton wears number two for Bristol. Ty Combs is 61. Joshua Sear is 48. 22 is Garrett Davis. Kiernan Doherty is number 59. Just mentioned Josh Garrow, number nine. Jason Hartman, 55. Tyler Hebert, 18. Tyrus Keith is number 80. Austin Lafayette, 64. Brandon Mansfield, 79. 29 is Kyle Malleus. 77 is Ethan Meacham. And I'll pick up with that. In just a second, as we're in the second quarter, about the midway point, eight-minute quarters, 12-6 to score. Rutland with the lead. They trailed 6-0 after a long touchdown run by O'Brien of Bristol. But Bristol on the move now, and Benway at quarterback. And they're going to reverse it. Yep. That's Garrow, and Garrow looking for some help on the outside. Got the perimeter, got the first down, and he's going to end up with a good 15 to 18 yard run right now. And again, he was just so patient letting his blockers do their job. For Rutland coming to number 27, Bailey Plant. So Bailey Plant's going to give Hogan Camp a breather as he's coming out. So Bristol with back-to-back -back first downs deep in the Rutland Rec Pride Red Squad's territory. And I mentioned number 70 is James O'Brien. Joey Paya is number 8. 44 is Mike White. Derek Whitcomb is 81. Tyler Willie's the number 11, and Rowan Cameron is 51. Right now, the rain, the drizzle has stopped. They've got a long snap count. Oh, there's good penetration, good pressure, and the ball up for grabs, and it goes between a whole bunch of everybody back there, Bristol and Rutland, and nobody able to pick it off, and Collimore is slow to get up, and he's going to be looked at by Coach Mullen. As there's quite a pack of people there and quite a collision. Number 13 checking in right now. Matt Senecal for Rutland. And yeah, the Collimore is going to need a little tension as we'll take a look at him. You see the team's take a knee right now. And now he's going to be helped up. And I think he's going to come out of the game. Yeah, Coach Short is going to walk out. But the good, good sign is he got up under his own power and he's walking off under his own power. And hopefully he'll be on the mend real quick and back into the ball game. So again, at uh, that time, the Rutland Rec Pride football team got a good penetration, good push in the backfield. Almost came up with a sack, and then Benway threw the ball right when he was getting hit and kind of floated on him into the middle of a lot, a lot of people. Canton in the backfield, number two now. So they got a new tailback in Canton. It's going to be a pass play, a pass play. Protection's there. Great catch, great catch. That's Malleus, Kyle Malleus with the grab. Tell you what made that whole play possible, though, was the pass protection that Benway had. The fact that Benway didn't get antsy and get happy feet back there. He just stayed calm. He did slide to his right towards the end when the pressure started coming in off that left side of him, but just a real good job right there by Bristol all the way around. And we have a timeout taken by Bristol. For have the first time out of the ball game. We are getting close to the end of the second quarter. 12-6 to score Rutland with the lead, but Bristol 
on the move right now as we'll take a look at Coach Shortle's huddle. And I'll tell you, again, number one is Van Gilder. Alicia is number two. McCarroll, number three. Lackney, number four. Fish is five. Bowles, seven. Seneca, 13. Collimore, 14. Clark, 16. Alvarez, 20. Dayton, 21. Lenoche, 23. Riley, 24. Ionetta, 25. Anderson, 26. Plant, 27. Maneri, 20, 53. 54 is White. Woodard, 96. Franzoni, 95. Gibb, 85. Tannen, 57. Nichols, 59. McFarland, 64. Hogenkamp, 72. Drop, 81. Wright, 90. And Smith, 91. And Collimore back in the ball game now after sitting out the one play. And Senecal will hustle off the field. As that, again, timeout just ending now. That was the first timeout taken by either side here in the ball game. We don't have an official clock up, but we've got to be within, um, well, I'd say within two minutes at the end of the first, before half. That's unofficial. Oh, and the big guy, the fullback, just rambling and took a lot of people to bring Lafayette down. As they're looking toward that yard marker, and they're going to call another timeout. So I would say back-to-back -back timeouts that we probably within inside a minute of the first half coming to an end as they're driving for the tying score, Bristol is. With just one timeout left, they brought O'Brien back in the backfield, number 70. He's behind Lafayette and Benway, the quarterback. There's the pitch to O'Brien, and, well, they've got the corner sealed nicely as he will be gang-tackled with Lenoche 23 there. And the last timeout taken by Bristol. And again, they are, I'm looking for the yard marker. They like that sweep play. They ran it at least six, seven times here in this first half. And the sweep plays where they got their touchdown on their opening possession. That's number nine coming back in. Josh Garrell into the ballgame for Bristol as they have a personnel change. Okay, they've got second and eight. And they're in the red zone, but they're not in a goal situation yet. So now, unofficially, I have it as that was their final timeout, but that's unofficial. So Benway, been a real good leader out there, made some good decisions with the ball for Bristol. This is a passing situation over the middle and got it. Going to go in and dives forward. Touchdown. You talk about second efforts. That was Kyle Melius. And again, Adam stopped short. And he broke two different tackles to get in there. And now in a 12-12 game, Bristol with a chance to take the lead at the half. Again, nice pass protection. Gave... Benway the chance to let the root, the route develop in front of him. Then he, good throw, nice catchable ball he throws. So looking for the first successful two-point conversion of the afternoon for either team is Bristol right now. And he fumbled it, picked up, and smart play. Smart play. Did he get in, though? He is in, so on a broken play, Lafayette will score. Making it 14 to 12, now Bristol. I, I think they just said nine seconds left in the half, unofficially. So again, uh, Bristol that time showing a nice mix of run and pass. They went down the field, so 14 to 12 to score, Rutland Rec Red. The pride will go on offense for at least one play here. And I see Coach Shortle talking to the official about the time. Yeah, they're going to take a timeout right now. So Jim, take a timeout. He'll talk to his guys and got a great ball game here for you. 14 12 Bristol with the lead over the Rutland Rec Pride Squad, the Red Squad. Yeah, they're putting the secondary real deep to drop in the safeties way back here. Bowles was showing he's had a very accurate, powerful arm. Throwing down the field, he's got a man open, and he's got it! Colomar's gonna score on a bomb from Bowles 
to Collimore with time running out in the first half in the secondary, waiting for the deep ball. Collimore made one move, got open, and then that blazing speed of his, and you couldn't have thrown a better pass than that than what Bulls did. Nick Bulls with a bomb. We'll give Rutland the lead on, at a 20 to 14, or 18 to 14. Oh, they had pushed their safeties back, knowing that they would probably throw a bomb. Yeah, boy, that's why it's an instructional lead. They're learning right now. There's a lot of chat on the defensive side right now of Rutland about don't make the same mistake they just said. That's what we just watched. So, But again, a great protection. Picture perfect pass and catch by Collimore and 18 12, looking for the two points here. And Lenochi's in, so they'll convert it. I got to do my math. 18 20 to 14. I apologize. 20 to 14. And that is, that was the last play of the half, and it'll be 20 to 14, Rutland Rec, and what's been a great ball game. The future of football shining very bright here in Rutland County. 20 to 14, Rutland over Bristol at the half. The great first half of football to watch. Fumble on the play, and I think Bristol's got it. Yep. So Bristol with a huge turnover right there, and I'll tell you why that was so big. Let me get my white balance first. Rutland came out after they had opening possession in the second half. Remember, they scored on that long touchdown bomb from uh, Bowles to Collimore. They had all the momentum going. They'd taken the lead at 20 to 14. They had the opening ball, opening possession in the second half. They could have gone down and taken control of the game. They had the plays set up already on the sideline and then they fumbled the ball there. So we'll have Benway coming out. And so Bristol get right back. Not that they're out of the ball game. They can seize the momentum again right here. And they're gonna go back to O'Brien. He was the main ball carrier. Oh, great tackle. Who is that or the Somebody came in, made a big hit. I'm just looking for his jersey number. I think it's Lenochi, 23. It is, Quinton Lenochi came in. He fired in, and what Coach Shirtle's talking about was attacking on every play here. 16 minutes to go, two eight minute quarters left, third and fourth quarter, and he wants them to fire in there. And so, Hogan Camp's coming off the field right now, taking a breather. Who's the backup center? As he is, uh, he plays both ways, offense, defense. Offensive line, he's the center. And defense, I think that's a tackle position he's at. So a good game. Picked up four yards on first down. And there was movement. I don't see a flag yet. Benway's got a stiff wind. He's got a throw in. He's got it up, 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 and... Oh, I tell you, almost picked off again. He's looking for Garrow. And now they're going to call the defense here. There is the flag. I didn't see it till afterwards. Roughing the passer. That's going to be an automatic first down. So I'm roughing the pass, you call. It's only the third penalty of the ball game, but that's a big one. And yeah, you see the 15 yards being marked off. Now, I did not see who the penalty was assessed to, but it was on the Rutland Rec Pride. So that will give them first down, and they're in the red zone right now. Yes, I was just checking my yard markers. Yeah, they're in the red zone. I shoot from the back of Coach Shirtle's pickup truck, which I'm very gracious for that. But the height, with the factor of my age, my bad eyes, my bad ears, and the not really being up in a press box, it takes me a while to pick up the yard markers. Besides that, everything's golden. So Benway and Bristol marching down the field. They had some help from penalty. Pressure, pressure on. Oh, he's able to get out of the pocket, away from the pressure, worked himself to the sideline, and going to be brought down just shy. Uh, he's inside the five. Again, the key to that, the secondary did a nice job with the coverage, but the protection that Benway had gave him time to keep looking down the field, looking down the field, and then very athletic young man. He just tucked the ball in and ran. I tell you, he's made some real good decisions at the quarterback spot today. Aaron Benway, an eighth grader out there. And then it's a first and goal. Precisely, I'd say it lines up with the four yard line possibly can you watch your munger vision Rotten wreck pride tackle football coach shortle coach mullen coach hawk 
You're watching Bristol right now in those maroon burgundy uniforms taking on their own wreck red squad. The pitch back to O'Brien, and oh, he cut back against the grain, and he is going to be touchdown. Well, there's a whistle. I don't see an indication of a touchdown. I didn't think his momentum had stopped going forward. But they're going to mark him short. Okay. They'll bring up a second down and goal. O'Brien is a tall kid. I don't have his stats on me like that, but he runs tall. He runs upright. He'll learn that. He's going to put a little more bend, a little more lean in his run right now, but he's an effective run. He's a big guy, so. See what they're going to bring in the backfield. So they're going to stay with Lafayette 64 and Benway at quarterback, Lafayette fullback, and O'Brien at tailback. And oh, yeah, we got a flag here as the ball was snapped and nobody moved initially, so. Bristol will be assessed the penalty. And they've, I think that's their first penalty. If it is not, they've played a, a pretty much a mistake-free ball game from the penalty end of the aspect here. Here we're in the third quarter, 20 to 14. Rutland got the opening possession here in the second half, fumbled the ball on the first play. Bristol recovered, and this is their drive. They've got it down inside the five-yard line. And again, it, Whistle, yeah, motion, and that should be on the offense. Yep, so that's going to be back-to-back -back mistakes right there, and that's going to move them further back. So after having a very uh, clean game to this point, they've made a couple mistakes down in the critical spot here, and it is, it is sprinkling out. Rain through the night, but, you know, the field's in darn good shape, actually. I'd like to see them make a, a nice permanent facility for this 7th, 8th grade tackle program, whether it's Rotary Field or they'd never get this one because this is men's softball field for the uh, Rex adult men's league. But they actually absolutely need a uh, permanent home for this program. It's been ex very successful. I gotta believe it's a money maker for the Rack. And it's just... Look at that, look at that, look at that tackle. O'Brien's going down as he got in the backfield. That's Franzoni, and he is fired up. That's a couple of times they that Mr. Franzoni's got in the backfield. And another flag. I miss this. Well, we'll get the call. Oh, I think it's an unsportsmanlike. Because, see, the referee, I heard the coach holler, watch your mouth to his player. And how the referee in there, are very, uh... yeah, oh, yeah, missed it, yeah, unsportsmanlike. So that's going to be a big one. They'll bring the ball way back. So they're moving backwards here. I oh, know these refs approach this like it's a, uh... like it's a USC football game. They're very professional about it. They've done a good job with the game so far. I'm just trying to catch up on some of the changes here. Yeah, they have a third down. Okay. Third and a long, long distance here. Got a new back in the backfield for Bristol. I'll try to pick that up for you in a second. And they're going to be airing it out. And that's going to be batted around, and it'll hit the ground. Again, through into tight coverage, looking for Garo. He was surrounded. That was Ionetta. They got the hand on the ball, but there was a lot of uh, Rutland Rec players there. So on a drive that had so much promise in the beginning of it for Bristol. Penalties, penalties, penalties really hurt them three in a row. Or three penalties this drive. And on a fourth down play, Benway, there is no punting or kicking off in this league. And a snap of the ball and a long count. Benway, looking to the left side, got a man wide open and he dropped it. Yep. He's going to see that one all night long. That was Tyrus Keith, number 80. It was a well-thrown ball. You know what it was? He was running before he caught the ball. Oh, you see that at the high school level, college level, pro level? Yeah, he was ready to take off before he got the ball. So 
The fumble in the end didn't hurt Rollin. They have good field position on the change of possessions here. Ball going over on downs. And now Bowles was the quarterback in the first half. Nick Bowles, number seven. And he was very, very impressive. He'll get the start here in the second half. So the second offensive play of the third quarter for the Rutland Rec team. And that nice job. They brought down Lenoche. Good read right there defensively by Bristol as Josh Jason Hartman, number 55, an eighth grader over there on that from his linebacker position. And again, we've seen long touchdown runs, long touchdown passes, good defensive stands, good football to watch. You're watching tomorrow's High School Stars today on Munger Vision. There's pressure and dropped them down. Fumble. That's a live ball, and it's way down, about 15, 20 yards away, and I believe Rutland was fortunate enough to recover it. But they lost 5, 10, 15, 20 yards on the play. No, actually, no. You know what? He was slammed to the ground, and that's where the ball hit the ground and got fumbled. That should be where the ball spotted. I believe as the quarter's over, third quarter was a strange quarter, that's for sure. Bristol had a ton of time of possession. They got down inside the red zone, could not score. Bowles was sacked, and when the, he hit the ground, that's when the ball fumbled out. But the ground cannot cause a fumble, and the ball should be spotted where he initially was tackled. But they lost a ton of yardage on the play. And Bowles putting his uniform back on there. He got swung around. And he had to fix the straps on his padding. But we're going into the fourth quarter in a 20 to 14 game. That's the score we had at the half. And it didn't seem like they'd, they'd played long enough in that third quarter. To, but it is in the third quarter. And again, Rutland got the opening possession. They fumbled the ball away. Bristol had the ball for a long time. They got like a down, for lack of an exact number, they got down, looked to me, like inside the five yard line. But then a rash of penalties stalled out their drive. Now Rutland, deep in the hole, start of the fourth quarter here from Northeast Field. And there's the pitch back, and you can see Lenoci following his blockers, and ooh, good hit. Good clean hit right there. That's number 59 for Bristol. Kieran Doherty coming in and making a nice tackle. So yeah, that, what that was, that was a third down play. And since there's no punting, they're taking the equivalent of changing possessions here and they're gonna bring the ball down, spawn it at the other end of the field. Okay, so they're gonna spot the ball. I'll get that for you in a second. As soon as they officially spot it down. So we're at the 40, 38 yard line it looks like. So Bristol's going to take over. Benway will be at quarterback. He's gone the complete ball game at quarterback. <laughs> yeah, so Benway coming out. And again, Bristol just six points down. Got a chance here. That's rain picking up a little bit here in the fourth quarter. Ben Wayne looked good out there at quarterback today. A couple of times he's thrown into crowds. And he's going to reverse it to Garrow. Garrow, as they didn't stay home on that end, Garrow's got a lot of room to run. He's got the corner. He's got 5, 10, 20 yards right now. Going to cut inside and be brought down in wreck pride territory at the 40. Yeah, and what happened there was they bought the ball fake. They over-pursued. Defensively, they over-pursued, and they just cut back against it. And that was the whole point of that play was just what you saw right there. Yeah, so Garrow, number nine. I think it's Josh. I'm looking, looking, looking. See, my, my roster is in a numerical order. That is Josh Garrow. So that was a big play. He's a first down, and again, they're on the move here offensively in the fourth quarter. 
A touchdown with Ty at it, 20, then an opportunity for the two-point conversion. O'Brien has returned to the backfield at the tailpack spot in line with Lafayette in the uh, fullback position. Benway, long count. He's done that the whole game. Fumbled it, and that's three times now he's dropped the cent uh, ball from the center. As John McCarroll coming in, number three for Rutland on that defensive end. And Bristol, very fortunate there. They recovered the ball. It's going to be Ionetta coming out. And Bristol has mixed the pass and the run up well today. And they've been able to draw some offside penalties. Oh, look at Lafayette. He knocked over defender, skipped over another, puts his shoulder down, going forward, and it's taken the whole rep pride team to bring him down, but he didn't score. <laughs> but I think the only people left to tackle him were me. <laughs> and number 64, Austin Lafayette, a fullback slash linebacker, an eighth grader. And we've got an injured player down for Rutland. He was right in the middle of that tackle. It's an official's timeout. 59 coming in for Rutland right now is Jacob Nichols. And that's going to be Chase Wright, number 90, who hopefully just got the wind knocked out. He's going to be okay. Yeah, and he's up, and he's running off under his own power, and that's a great sign. So Bristol on the march here in the fourth, and here in probably closing in on the midway point of the fourth quarter. So time of possession, if you looked at the stats for the second half, Bristol's had the ball a three to one margin, time of possession, but they haven't scored. So Benway, looking to bark out the signals again. Ty Combs is the center, number 61. That's just power of football, that last one. They just gave the ball off to the fullback and let him use his size advantage. This is a pass. It's going to be down inside, and Garo went up, got it, and he's touched down. He went in and got it. What a nice grab by Garo. Josh Garo will tie the game up at 20-all. Well, he, he's a good size guy, height-wise, and they threw the ball. Benway threw the ball high, and he went up and got it, and then he turned away from the defender, and we got a 20-20 game in the fourth quarter. I haven't called a close football game all year. This is great, great action. So from his flanker spot, he made the grab and he scored. Again, this very important two point conversion coming up right here. This would break the tie. And, and again, I don't have an official clock to go by, but if I'm guessing, I'm thinking we're at the midway point. As Benway, we'll zoom in on him, get a good look here. Had trouble the last couple snaps. He got it this time in Lafayette. That's where I would have gone. Right to the big man. And he got it, and the tie has been broken. So we've got a 22-20 ball game. So let me mark that down real quick. Bowles looking to be a uh, come from behind quarterback here. I'm trying to think of, uh, the kid from Michigan, oh, 40A, Tate Forcier, brings his team back each time, and we're looking for that right now, or John Elway type quarterback, or Tom Brady type quarterback, as they trail 22-20 in the fourth, and Franzoni back in the lineup, number 95. Rutland Rack just hasn't had a lot of offensive snaps here in this second half of play. And Bowles gives it off to Collimore, and he's going to step inside one tackle. Collimore with the first down, and good running right there. He'll have the first down just shy of midfield as Collimore went off tackle. And just a good read of the hole. Nice block by the line also. They made a good hole for him to slide off from. And he had a great view of that the way he came right at the sideline. You're able to watch it. A good tackle by Bristol. So first down, and that will move the chains. And they're going to go, yeah, with a full house back. You see the three backs out there as we look right down the line of scrimmage. The pitch play will go to Collimore as he is going to cut to the opposite side. He's got one man to get around. Oh, great job of staying over there. They're going to bring him down for a loss. 
Good job of stringing that play out and just staying at home is Tyrus Keith, number 80. And, well, I shouldn't say a loss on the play. He really spot the ball. It could be no gainer. As it looks to be, well, give him a half a yard. He gained a half a yard on the play. Takes up a second and nine and a half yards to go. 22-20, Bristol Middle School. They led early, six to nothing. Then the game was tied at six. And then Rutland able to. Take the lead. Bowles, spacing was off and throwing deep and bumped. Intercepted! Went off from Colibor and it comes down to Garrow. And Garrow going to be brought down. Yes. On a good tackle by Lenochi. So the ball deflected and went through the playoff was the uh, originally the quarterback, Bowles, got back into the pocket, bumped into one of his own players, and that just kind of threw the whole rhythm of the timing of the playoff. So yeah, so Bristol with a chance here to extend their lead, maybe put the game away. Time ticking down, fourth quarter. And they're gonna have the ball near midfield. They're gonna call I'm gonna call it the 47 yard line. I think they're winning by two. Tw uh, yeah, 24, 20, they're up by two. 22-20. So a big defensive stand right here for Rutland as they were looking at. They need a stop and they need the ball back. And Bristol trying to avenge a loss last week to this same team in Lafayette. Oh, good yardage on first down. He's going to have close to six yards on first down. They're going to mark it in wreck territory by just a nose of a football, but they'll have it. I'm going to round it off, say, the 50-yard line. Brings up a second and a long five. And also going to Ethan Smith, 91, inserted in that defensive line for Rutland. Nice see Franzoni, 95, and I'm just trying to catch up on the numbers now. 57, where are you? Josh Tan Jacob Tannen out there. As you look right down the line of scrimmage, best seat in the house right here. And it's just a straight quarterback keeper, and he's looking for the corner, and they're, well, a nice stick, and he'll be held to a yard gain as, again, that time, the Rutland defense stayed at home, stayed in their lanes, and brought him down for a big third down play right here. And that clock winding down. Nobody's used, Rutland still with all three timeouts here in the second half. And they'll spot the ball. Like I said, he picked up about a yard. So again, big offensive side of the ball. Big play for Bristol. They pick up a first down. Keep the time moving. Keep possession of the ball. Not looking for a stop. You get the ball back on defense, on offense. Mauricio out here on the corner. See if they move the quarterback out on a roll. Nope. Straight handoff. And boy, he is close. He is very close. I think he's going to be short by about a half a yard, but I'll wait for the official spot of the ball here. Will they take an official's timeout and measure? Oh, I think I was more out of time than I thought. I think the ball game just ended. Oh, yeah. So Bristol, that time, see, I don't have vision to a clock here, but Bristol will win the ball game 22 to 20. And what was an excellent ball game by both sides. Again, we saw some good, great blocking, good passing, good running. So you can tell both programs are really well coached, well put together, but we'll have the handshakes as we look right over the shoulder of the Rutland Rec Pride, but it'll be Bristol 22, Rutland Rec Red 20. Munger Vision saying get out there, support events like this in your community, and I always support Munger Vision.